Great, I'm very excited to be here. Proud to be speaking at TEDx Yerevan today. <laughs> My topic today is archaeological tourism, which I think has tremendous potential. Tremendous potential for our meeting. Now don't guess what this picture is. Don't think about this picture. <laughs> it is not hamburger meat. It is nothing worse than hamburger meat, I assure you that. More about this picture in a minute. What I want to start with is a question to set the context for my presentation today. The question is this. The question is how long do you think, how many years do you think soft tissue, tissue from a body, can last in an archaeological setting, in a cave? How many years? My friend Boris Kaskari, who runs the Archaeological Institute here, he's here today, tells me that soft tissue normally can last about five or six hundred years in an archaeological setting. So you can imagine his surprise when Boris and his team open up a skull, open up a skull that they found at an archaeological site here in Armenia, and out drops brain tissue. Brain tissue from a skull that Boris and his team found in the Arrini Cave in Viator Mars here in Armenia. And they found this skull. They found this skull on the 6,000 year level. 6,000 year level. So, what does that mean? That means that this brain tissue, that normally would only last about five or six hundred years in such a setting, somehow, lasted 6,000 years in the Irani Cave. There's something really unique happening here in Armenia, and the Armenian people need to know about it. The world needs to know about it. So how, do we, how does Armenia take better advantage of these archaeological sites and archaeological treasures, both in the area of education and research, but also in economics and tourism. So we have some tourists here. Some tourists standing at the entrance of a rainy cave. Well, actually, the handsome man in the middle is Boris. The handsome man in the middle is not a tourist. So we have these tourists standing at the entrance of a rainy cave on this dirt pathway. But what do you see in front of that dirt pathway? You see various vessels and artifacts that I understand are about 5,000 years old, maybe 5,500. So the danger is that anybody who walks on that pathway is going to damage some of these artifacts below. One possible solution is to put and install an elevated walkway along the wall behind those tools. And more about that elevated walkway uh, in a minute. Five thousand five hundred year old shoe from the Arrini Cave is currently on display on exhibit at the History Museum here in Yerevan. Now Nike Shoe Company doesn't know about this shoe yet, <laughs> and I think when Nike finds out about this shoe, it's going to make a great commercial. But most Armenians know about the shoe. But the shoe is really something much more, much more than an artifact, a single artifact that brings a few hundred more people to the History Museum every year. If you go to the source of this shoe, to the Irani Cave, you will really see, experience, and feel something really amazing. Here's Dina, I think she's here today. Here's Dina. Dina's on the research team here. She's the one, I think it was in 2008, who uncovered that shoe in that small pit in the first level of the Irani Cave. She uncovered the shoe, I think, in 2008. But the cave, the Arrini Cave, has so much more to offer uh, than the shoe, and there's so much in the Arrini Cave, so much in the cave that hasn't even been explored yet. The potential is really tremendous. There are other highlights of the cave. This one's also pretty well known. This is the 6,000-year-old winemaking equipment from the cave. 6,000-year-old wine vessels. And you, where the white arrow is is where the people would stop on the grapes. Stop on the grapes, the juice would run down into that vessel, the round vessel in the middle. And then the juice would be fermented and stored in the vessels along the outside. 
6,000 year old equipment. That means that these vessels have been there since about 4,000 BC. 4,000 BC is 3,000 years. 3,000 years before ancient Hellenic Greece. So that means that in this part of the region, in this part of Armenia, there was a civilization and culture that was sophisticated enough to make wine and to enjoy wine 3,000 years before ancient Hellenic Greece. Another wine story from Reddit. This is the Zora wine, you probably know. Bloomberg recently named this Armenian red wine, Zora wine, one of the top ten wines in the world. Top ten wines in the world. The vineyard here is in the shadows of the Areti Cave. Those hills beyond the vineyard is where the, where the Areti Cave is. Zorik, the Italian Armenian who runs the vineyard and the, and the winery, is committed to making this wine using traditional Armenian methods of the grapes and the vessels, the ceramic vessels that we saw in the earlier slides. Well, Zorik is becoming pretty famous now, right? He's got one of the top ten wines in the world. So he is invited off and out to wine tasting events all over Europe. He goes to these events now. And as soon as these European vintners who've been making wine for generations hear that Zora's first vintage was in 2010, three years ago, 2010, they turn up their nose at this newcomer to the winemaking business. Zorik has a response now when he's teased this way. He now says, I may be the newest winemaker in this room today, but my next door neighbor, my next door neighbor in the Irene Cave is the oldest winemaker in the world. <laughs> so why don't more people come here? Why aren't there students and PhD students and researchers and tourists all over this country? There's a lot of reasons. There's limited access. Some of these sites are hard to reach. There's not much promotion going on. There's inadequate resources. Lots of reasons. But one specific reason I want to, I want to show you in this slide, again, from the Irani Cave. This is also the 6,000-year level. I think on the right side of your screen, you can probably see a couple of the vessels that are part of that winemaking. But what do you see on the left side of your screen, in that red circle? I see a passageway. I see a passageway that is totally filled with dirt and rocks. There's no way to know what's on the other side of that passageway because the excavators, the, the archaeological teams here, can't continue their digging in that river cave because they can't get the dirt out. If you dig, you've got to do something with the dirt. They can't get the dirt out without walking on that pathway and damaging those artifacts below. I see on the other end of that passageway a big cavern with goodness knows what kind of treasures, what kind of artifacts there might be on the other end of that passageway. But right now, we have no way to know what's on the other end of that passageway. Armenia needs to fix this, and Armenia's international partners would like to help. Here's Boris again. This is at the, at the Institute, the Archaeological Institute here in downtown Europe. And he's showing off some of the treasures from the Irene Cave. In fact, in fact, there are hundreds of artifacts and treasures that have been excavated from sites all over Armenia that are currently sitting in cardboard boxes and shoe boxes wrapped in tissue paper in warehouses and basements. Because there's no place to display these treasures. There's no place to do research on them. There's no place to display them. The Institute's a small building in downtown Maryland. So here's Boris. He's showing off this textile. This is a 6,000-year-old Textile. 6,000 year old textile, and for the rainy day. Has no business being around so long, 6,000 years. So he's describing to his visitors, he's had some visitors from the Smithsonian Institution, from Washington, D.C., and Carnegie Corporation of New York, some really important potential international partners. They're very interested in what the Institute is doing. So he describes the preserved capabilities of the cave. He says the secret is, the secret is, a unique combination of temperature, humidity, and dung. Dung, yes, cow and goat dung, which apparently has remarkable preservative properties. My wife Libby's trying to get Boris to 
bottle up some of that dung <laughs> into a commercial face cream. <laughs> we'll see how that sells for us. I don't know. We'll see how that sells. Sorry. Yeah. A rainy cave is now on. There are many sites all over Armenia. This is a place called Kakabatsor. It's a newly discovered site. It's on the road to Gyumri. A magnificent open site. It's a promontory. I hope you can see on the picture that there's magnificent gorges on both sides. And the promontory points directly at Mount Arba. It's a magnificent, a magnificent site. And the promontory is full of dozens, I don't know how many, dozens of altars and different kinds of carved out baths you can see here. <coughs> Sacrifices, rituals, goodness knows what these were used for, because this site has not yet been excavated at all. And look at the picture on the right. The picture on the right are two magnificent snake petroglyphs on a flat stone in somebody's driveway. There's a house at the entrance to this promontory. And this, these petroglyphs are sitting right on the ground. I guess this guy drives over these things on his way to work every day. Where else but our meeting would you have two snake petroglyphs? From, I don't know, 5,500 years old, that's what this site is. In somebody's tribe. It's really quite, quite amazing. So, Kakabatsa, newly discovered site, 5,500 years old, no excavations yet. University students, PhD students, universities all over the world would sadly have a chance to work with the team from the Institute to excavate this site. What can we do to make this happen? How can we make this happen? But hold on, there's more. I hope you can see this picture. This site is in Armavir Mars. Armavir Mars. Some of us recently visited this site. It's, it's from Google Earth. The picture is so thousands of feet up. I don't know how, how far away the camera is. So you can tell this is a huge structure, a tremendous structure, a stone structure, 4,500 years old or so, that's used for hunting or was used for hunting. You can maybe see on the left side of your screen. Sorry, the right side of the screens, an opening. An opening, which is where the people would entice or drive the animals into that opening. The animals would instinctively run along the inside of that stone wall. And at the point on the left side of the screen, there's a big pit. Animals fall into the pit, voila, dinner. This is a hunting structure from 4,500 years old on a hillside in Armavir Mars. There's also petroglyphs in all of the place. But as exciting as this site is to see, there's something even more exciting about it. This site, this site, and the, and the analysis of this site is changing the way, changing the conversation among anthropologists and archaeologists about the origin of human communities. It's a pretty big deal. Why did people come together into communities or villages? Why did they start working together? The traditional thought has been it was the introduction of agriculture that caused the, 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 the hunters and gatherers to, to come together into a village. What this demonstrates, because this is before the introduction of agriculture into this region, this demonstrates that people work together on communal projects in communities of one sort or another before the introduction of agriculture is changing, potentially changing, a revolutionary idea, changing the way anthropologists are looking at this really important point. And this, this site is right in our backyard, in Armavir Mars. There are many other sites. I haven't actually been to this one. This is Tassar Mountain near Sision, magnificent petroglyphs all over. Just to demonstrate again that the potential is enormous. There are sites all over Armenia, a dozen or so are being worked on now. Many more than that not being worked on. Our potential is really enormous. So here's my challenge. The challenge is the embassy we've just now received from Washington, about $50,000 to begin work on a ready cave, working with the Institute. <clears throat> We're going to put a perimeter fence, a protective fence around the outside of the cave. We're going to begin to install that elevated walkway that we talked about on the earlier slide, hopefully to improve access uh, to the cave. And that's a start. That's a start. Hopefully this will allow people, this will allow people to get, get more tourists in to appreciate the sites in the cave, maybe bring some resources to the Institute, and a 
allow the resumption of the excavation so we can get the dirt out and see what's on the other end of that passage. So it's a start. There's another important partner that's been working with the Institute, Michael Fellows, who's here today with us, the retired U.S. Ambassador. He was the Deputy Ambassador. He was number two here at the U.S. Embassy back in the late 1990s. And since he left Armenia, he and his brother Joe have been raising funds for archaeological digs in the Republic of Armenia. They really have been virtually alone in this effort. There really is nobody else who has been working consistently to support and work with the Institute and Morrison and his team on these days. Other countries about the size of Armenia, Israel, and Cyprus, even Little Malta, Little Malta have done some pretty good work to excavate their sites and preserve their sites and promote their sites for education and tourism. Why not? Why not Armenia? Why not Armenia? So how can we help? How can we help? The Institute is working with traditional partners with embassies and international organizations and foundations and universities, and again, making a bit of a start, doing some important good work. But there are lots of platforms out there, new creative platforms out there, where individuals can contribute to efforts like this. In fact, Armenia doesn't make very good use of any of these platforms right now. There's huge potential for Armenia crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, microloans, social entrepreneurship, huge potential, but including in this area of archaeology. There's one site that I gather is about to do a campaign, hopefully pretty soon, on, in, in archaeology, a, a crowdfunding platform. So my, my plea to you today, I hope that everybody today, when we leave the Tumo Center, that we'll all be committed to doing what we can through our organizations or individually through one of these crowdfunding to bring these archaeological treasures to life and to show off Armenia as an archaeological treasure trove. Armenia is starting to do some good work in promoting its religious sites, its historic sites, its cultural sites. Why not the archaeological sites? Why not the archaeological sites as well? So again, I hope when we leave here we do more than just imagine all the great stuff that you can see in the Arrhenia Cave. I hope we go out and we find it, we see it ourselves. And I hope, even more important, that we bring that story to the world.